Hello, students. By now, you should have watched the other video, the video that's just a get to know me video, get to know Arsenault. Um, this video is now specifically, specifically about JMS 494 um, and the class that has Wednesday section meetings. Okay. A um, couple of things right off the bat. Uh, what is this class all about? Well, the title of the class is Media Law and Ethics. So it's about as the title suggests, um, laws and ethical issues that relate to work in one of the media industries. And I do like to use the plural media industries. Why do you have to take this class? Well, if you want to major in JMS, or if you are already majoring in something in the School of JMS, uh, that's Journalism and Media Studies, um, the class is required, so you have to take it. That's the answer. Why are you taking the class? Because you have to take it. But if you're not majoring in the school of JMS, maybe you're getting a minor in the school. Uh, I still think the information is incredibly valuable and incredibly useful uh, simply to be an educated person, uh, to be a discriminating a discriminating consumer of information, right? Not everything you see in print is true. Not everything you see online is true. Um, and if you understand some of the legal and ethical issues in which the various media industries operate, I think it will make you a better news consumer. And the ability to distribute information um, is very, very powerful. And we have many different ways to distribute information now. If your job is the professional production of some type of media content, um, there can be some pretty negative ramifications, maybe accidental uh, negative ramifications if you publish or post something that's inaccurate or maybe post something in haste, or even if it's true, even if it's true and you have a legal uh, ability to publish something, there could be some negative consequences still. So maybe now we're getting into ethics. Just because you can do something doesn't mean you should do something. So anyway, we're going to explore some of the nuances and complexities related to law and legal issues and regulations and ethical issues related to work in the media industries. And again, just to repeat, if you want to work in one of the media industries, if you're majoring in the school of JMS, the information is vital. You're going to need to know it. But even if you're not going to work in one of the media industries, I still think it's useful information. JMS 494, spring 2023. Email via Canvas inbox. If you need to contact the instructor for the class, go to Canvas. Uh, on the left side, there's an inbox. I believe it's on the left side, Canvas inbox. That is the best way to email your instructor, okay? Uh, we get a lot of emails, and it's hard to keep up. That really, really does help keep communication organized for your instructor. So please email the instructor via Canvas inbox. Class meetings are important, okay? A lot of the material for the class is distributed online. The video lectures, which I'll discuss in a moment, are done online. Um, and you can do those uh, based upon the deadline. Those video lectures are due the day before your class meets face-to-face, -face, right? So uh, whatever day your class is meeting face-to-face, -face, the video lectures are due the day before. But coming to class is very, very important, okay? That is where we're going to have discussions and engage in hopefully robust dialogue, uh, which will help you learn more and help you maybe cement some things that you've done in the reading or learned in the video lecture. Um, video lectures are done using PlayPosit. Talk about those in a moment. PlayPosit is a system for putting questions into the videos. Uh, there's something called Packback. I'm going to talk about that in a moment. That takes the place of a discussion board. Uh, pretty much every week, there is a required Packback activity. Okay, I'll talk about that in a moment. Um, your participation in the live face-to-face -face classes is worth 10% of your grade. Okay, there is a rubric in the syllabus. I encourage you to look at that. Uh, that gives you the guidelines as to how participation is evaluated. You need to come to the meetings prepared, maybe have some questions scripted, um, just put some thought into the material before you show up and be willing to engage in discussion and also be respectful of your peers when they are presenting an idea. 
Um, there's going to be four exams. The lowest exam grade is dropped. Four exams, the lowest exam grades are dropped. The exams are done in the face-to-face uh, -face discussion sections. You are allowed to bring in one page of handwritten notes. Normal sheet of paper, eight and a half by 11. You can write on front and back, right? You can write on the front and back if you want. It's your handwriting. So as long as, as, long as the material is legible to you, that's fine. Uh, you are going to be the one making the notes um, and you're going to be the one who needs to read them. Uh, there's going to be a final paper. The instructions for that will be on Canvas very, very soon. This is due not quite at the end of the semester, but near the end of the semester. A short paper uh, analyzing some aspect of the First Amendment. Okay. Uh, and then there is something called SONA, which I'm assuming most of y'all are familiar with SONA, but if you're not familiar, I'll go over it. Um, but SONA is worth a very, very small percentage of the grade. That is the grading criteria. All of this is also in the syllabus. This is required textbook. If you have signed up for equitable access or if you've opted in for equitable access, you will get the textbook uh, made available to you online. Um, if you have opted out of equitable access, you can find this textbook, uh, the publisher information, all that good stuff is in the syllabus. Get it anywhere you want, eBay, Amazon, Craigslist, you know, anywhere you want. Just you do need to be reading the textbook. All right, now this is a screenshot of one of the video lectures that's using PlayPosit. Um, this is also PlayPosit, the system that we're using right now for this uh, video lecture slash syllabus quiz. Um, thing will stop. You have to answer a multiple choice question. And the video lectures do have closed captions. This CC symbol right here, it's in the bottom right-hand corner. Um, I am the one who's created the video lectures. So you'll see uh, my face and hear my voice in the video lectures. Um, but I've also made sure that closed captioning is there. If you want the words to appear on the screen, uh, if you find you need that little bit of extra assistance, a little bit of extra help, I, I find that it really does help to understand material, to have the words on the screen. So just click that and you will see the words on the screen. Video lectures are due the day before your section meeting has a face-to-face -face meeting, okay? All right, so you know in your schedule, the days that you're supposed to meet, the video lectures are due the day before. You should arrive to the face-to-face -face discussion meeting having completed the video lecture. Pack back. Now, I just want to explain this. Um, this is worth 15% of your final grade. Uh, 15, in total, it's worth 15% of the final grade. Most weeks, there is some type of pack back opportunity. If you have opted in for equitable access, I repeat, if you've opted in for equitable access, um, the cost to pack back is already included. You don't need to pay extra for it. If you're not in equitable access, I repeat, if you are not in equitable access, then you will need to sign up for some type of subscription. Uh, the cost is pretty low and it covers uh, through the semester, uh, but you will need to be using this thing called Packback. Um, all you need to do is follow the links in Canvas to get into Packback. Don't go to packback.com and try and create your own account. It will not synchronize correctly with Canvas Gradebook, okay? But if you just follow the links, just follow the links, that are on Canvas, you'll be fine. The participation requirements. Uh, again, like the video lectures, these are due the day before you meet for your face-to-face -face meetings, okay? These are due the day before. You need to post a question, okay? And respond to two questions. So you'll be posting a question and then interacting with your classmates. Now, to get the full credit, you need to get a minimum curiosity score a 50, each post gets a curiosity score. This is some type of algorithm, some form of AI that is evaluating your question. Um, I don't, you know, people have different feelings about AI, but I think it's reliable in this case. If you write a very, very simple yes, no question, you know, is the sky blue, that's not going to give you uh, the correct curiosity score. You need to have a good, robust uh, question 
probably write two or three sentences. If you include a citation to some type of online material, that helps. But just think of a good question, something that cannot be answered with a simple yes, no uh, answer. So your question and your responses all need to have the minimum curiosity score of 50. If you do all that, you do it by the deadline, um, you're going to get the points for the week, okay? And uh, now this, we're getting into the weeds here, but it is important. Packback is a separate system that communicates with Canvas, okay? If you follow Canvas, use the assignment links in Canvas. If you go into Packback through Canvas, the systems will communicate correctly and your grade will go from pack back to canvas. Again, I repeat, if you come into pack back through some circular means, or if you access the assignment without actually clicking on the canvas link, the grades are not going to sync. And then when the deadline passes, the deadline is always the day before uh, the face-to-face -face section meetings, the deadline passes, you're not going to get the points because you didn't follow the correct links. Okay. And this is just a more complicated, a lot of verbiage on the screen to say the same thing. Okay. Follow the links on Canvas uh, by the deadline and your grade will, I've done this before, trust me, your grade will sync correctly with Canvas. And if you need help, this email address is in the syllabus. Uh, these people will assist you with any issue, problem, or concerns you have about Packback. That's the email address right there. And again, information is also in the syllabus. And finally, uh, Sona. I think most of y'all are familiar with it, but just in case you're not, it not, Sona is a system for organizing human subjects, uh, different researchers, including other professors and graduate students who want to get opinions and information or communicate with uh, students a large group of students, uh, every student in this class will need to create an account on this thing called Sona. Link is in the syllabus. Uh, and once you're there, you'll start to get emails to say, hey, there's a research opportunity. There's some type of experiment going on. If you participate in those, uh, usually one research opportunity is worth half credit. Um, you need one Sona credit, which is like two different research opportunities for the most part. Um, if you do those at the end of the semester, uh, your instructors will get a list of red ID numbers of everyone who has participated and you'll get your 3%. It's not a huge part of the class, but we are strongly encouraging um, and really, in fact, requiring that students participate in SONA. Again, this is all explained in the syllabus, so hopefully there are no concerns or questions there. That's it. That's it. Get this done. Get this little video lecture syllabus quiz done. And we're off.